Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Bite of Geek. Today I'm going to be looking into whether it's actually worth spending the money to add a cache to your Synology NAS unit. Let's find out. So what I've got here is 256 gig of NetAct NVMe SSD storage. And uh, I've got two of these, and they are consumer grade Gen 3 devices, uh, retailing for around about £40 in the UK on Amazon and such websites. Um, Synology doesn't recommend that you use uh, consumer grade NVMe drives. Uh, you know, really, it's because you know of the the wear factor on the on the drive. You know, certainly you're using it on a on a uh, cache. Um, but you know, for the purpose of this video, that's what I'm using. And you know you may well get away with that depending upon what you use the NAS for. So installing the NVMe drives into your Synology NAS, really straightforward process on this DS920 Plus. You basically flip the unit upside down, and on the base of the unit, as you can see here, there are two little plastic covers. And um, all you need to do is uh, you, you just Click the, uh, the cover off, and inside you'll see where you need to insert the NVMe drive. Now, you, you just put these in in the same kind of way as you would do if you were putting them into motherboard on your PC, and uh, they just uh, slide in. I guess the real big difference here, and actually something which is quite nice, you know, eventually we'll probably see this on all kind of PC motherboards, is that you don't need to use the screw that comes with it in the packet. Uh, so you, you literally just slide the drive in and then press it down under this little plastic clip and that's it. It's in place and you replace the, uh, the cover. Um, you know, throw your screws away, you don't need those or use it for your PC, but once you've got your cover on, uh, you can repeat the process then with the second bay and um, you know, put the, the second drive in, which I will do shortly but you know if you don't need to put anything in there just leave that empty and um, that's it you know you are ready to get set up so before we get into the test i just want to show to you guys you know even though the mvme drives are installed inside the nas they're not initialized yet so they're not actually going to get used on any of the testing certainly not on the initial testing we'll enable them uh, in just a few minutes so for the first test, this is obviously without the cache, and I'm using, across both tests, identical files. So I've got a mix of MP3s, I've got uh, images, I've got ISOs, and I've got DVD rips as well. So it's a fair few gigabytes worth of data. Uh, it's not hundreds of gigabytes, but you know it's representative of the type of files that you would have uh, stored on, on a NAS unit within a home environment. Obviously, it might be slightly different within something like an office environment, but on a home environment, it probably reflects what you, you may well have on your NAS unit. Um, so the, the testing process that I've done is basically to take, uh, copy the files from the local PC onto the NAS, and then uh, copy them from the NAS uh, to another folder on the local PC. And obviously what that's giving us is the read and write uh, performance to and from the NAS unit. And uh, we'll see the results of this uh, after we've done the cache test. So just before we uh, get going with the cache test, what we need to do is to enable the uh, NVMe drives for uh, to, be, to be used as a cache within the uh, NAS unit. So you need to go into uh, DSM and you go into Storage Manager and uh, you go to your volume. And it's just a simple process. You go down to the... Uh, the, the volume and you uh, click to create the SSD cache and then uh, you've got your drives then you just select those drives now if you've only got one NVMe drive uh, that you're going to have in the cache then you'll only have read caching uh, and if you've got two of them there then you can have read write caching and uh, when you've got read write then you can set up RAID in this instance it's uh, it's RAID 1 that was the only option available and um, you know that gives you the redundancy there writing the data to the cache i think one thing to bear in mind here certainly if you live in an area where you are susceptible to power cuts um, it would be advisable to have uh, a ups attached to your system um, if you're going to enable that kind of caching because you know if you have a power cut you could have um, well 
you know, almost in a, a, a full cache full of data there ready to be written back that you would lose um, off of your system. So something to bear in mind there, it's not just simply a case of adding the NVMe drives and off you go. So um, as with the non-cache test, uh, it's the same set of files and the same process, it's copying them uh, from the local PC onto the NAS unit and then from the NAS unit back on to the local PC. But I've actually repeated this more times because um, the way caches work, the, the uh, frequently used files will be available within the cache. So actually the performance should start improving the more times I actually do it. And um, you know, obviously I'll take the average of the results across all those there. So I think uh, I'll, in total I've done this four or five times. Uh, so we'll, what you see in the charts in a minute will be the average uh, throughput um, for the uh, the transfer of those files. So here you go, here's the results. So as you can see with the transfer without the cache, uh, you know, fairly fairly standard really. You know, it was um, very close between the uh, ISOs and the DVD rips, obviously very large file sizes. Um, you know, gigabytes file sizes are unlikely to be uh, something that will benefit from a cache like this. It is usually uh, smaller file sizes, uh, images, MP3s, documents, things like that, that will benefit from a cache. So on the second slide here, we've then got the results with the cache. And uh, you know, as you can see, it is slightly better. You know, it's not a massive improvement. Um, you know, if you're expecting it to be half the time, um, it, it's it's not that uh, you'll be you'll be sorely disappointed. Um, you know, it is an incremental improvement, I would say, and it is uh, very noticeable with the MP3s and the images. You know, the the more times it, it did it, um, because those files are in the cache. Um, you know, they they. Uh, the transfer time actually reduced and you know, the throughput increased on that. So, and actually, if you look at the dashboard in DSM uh, for the uh, cache hit rate, you'll actually see that it starts to increase uh, the, the more times you start to transfer those files. So, I think overall, um, yeah, interesting exercise. You know, my my thoughts on this are, you know, if you are a home user who's bought a NAS unit for storing uh, mp3s and uh, images um, you know you'll probably be absolutely fine with the cache you'll get some benefit from that um, but you know if you've if you've got empty drive bays within your NAS you're probably be better off spending the money on another drive rather than adding the cache uh, I think if you um, you know if you uh, kind of got large ISOs or DVD rips or something like that. I don't think you're going to get much out of it. You might with Plex get some kind of performance improvement, but that's probably only if people are using the same kind of uh, playing the same kind of films around your house. Uh, I think you know if you're using maybe something like the, the DS920 Plus in an office environment, small office, you know, home office environment, where you've got lots of documents or um, you know, if you've got images or maybe you've got uh, code files from, uh, you know, maybe your website or something like that, where lots of people are updating those kinds of things, I think absolutely, I think you're going to benefit from the cache there. Um, you know, if these things are accessed all the time, it, it, it's only going to improve performance, but it's not a massive improvement. And at the end of the day, uh, as I say, if you have spare capacity in your NAS unit, the money would be better spent on another disk before you add to the cache. So there you go, guys. That's my thoughts on whether you should spend the cash on a cache uh, for your Synology NAS unit. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. You know, if you've got uh, a cache set up on your Synology NAS, how is it working out for you? Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, you know, you found it useful, hit that like button and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already for more content like this. Uh, but as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.